welcome again to ReefQuest. We haven't seen you folks for a while, and today we're going to take a little time to go back and revisit the reef. We're going to take a look again at exactly what a coral reef is, what a temperate reef is, and today we're going to get into the reef and find out where people, where people or critters live, um, how they function within the reef. And today we do have a new group of kids with us here. As you can see, they're working hard on something that they're going to share with you in a few minutes. We also have Tim Moline over on the internet, and we're going to get uh, over to him in a few minutes and would like you guys to start thinking about questions you might want to send in to us. We'd like you to send us some questions today. We're going to touch on them. And Tim, can you explain to them how through the internet they might get these to us? Sure can, Patty. Of course, go to the uh, Kids Science homepage. It's listed on your screen and also on back of me. And scroll down to ReefQuest, just below National Programs. Click on it and you will come into, of course, the ReefQuest homepage. Once you are there, simply scroll down again to ReefQuest short answer form. Click on it, and right there is where you can ask your question. Okay. Uncle Joe live underwater, but let's take a look at this unique critter of Uncle Joe's here. Hello, Patty, and everybody in ReefQuest. This is Uncle Joe back again to try to show you some unusual creatures, creatures that dominate the reef, but yet are very important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my video camera down again on this rocky reef off the coast of Southern California, and I'll move it in to a snail. A snail, it's a grazer. You can see it directly in front of the camera. I'll adjust the light slightly. This snail about three inches in diameter, has a common name called the wavy top turbot. Now as I move it back in, you can see it moving back inside for protection. The bony plate directly in front of the camera is called the operculum. It's like a trap door that protects this little snail. Now if I move my finger in, you can see how it retracts its muscular foot to seek the protection inside its coiled shells. Now, what is this snail doing? Well, like many of them that you see next door merchants, it actually grazes on this small algae that grows on top of the rocks. So these animals then have a little tiny serrated tongue called a radula, and it goes over the reef, kind of scraping back and forth the bits of algae. These wavy type carbons really like this reef. They have a very, very thick, hard shell, and the shell is usually encrusted with some kind of marine animal. And if you look closely on this one, you see a white covering. This is a bryozoan, it's a moss animal that lives on top of the shells. But other ones, other ones have different types of algae and encrusting organisms that kind of act like a hitchhiker. So as the snail goes on in search for a better pasture, better grazing area, he carries the hitchhikers along with him. So from Southern California, let me move once again my video camera downward and let's take a look at our friend the wavy top turbine snail as he slowly, slowly moves over the reef, eating the algae that is growing on top of the rocks. You know, there's a lot of critters that live in the reef environment. Right. And it seems like there's got to be something really special in that whole environment, that ecosystem, that makes it work. He's got something. Now, the kids, we've asked them to create some critters that they have special adaptations that they think might like to live in the reef. Tisha, tell me about yours. What is there about this critter? Um, it can camouflage with its surroundings. And the, these things up here, it can squirt water into, into the other fish and make it blind so it can run away. <laughs> cool. Okay, camouflage. Now, why would you need to camouflage yourself, Carol? Well, there are predators out there. Uh, there's also some interesting teeth here. Can you tell us just a tiny bit about the teeth? Um, it can um, go into the fish and make it paralyzed for a little while. Wow. wow. Amber has created a very unique... Um, fish here, or creature. Amber, tell us a little bit about this. Well, this creature is like an eel-like creature with the protection that is these little spines. And 
There's this false eye spot right there that protects itself, so when a fish comes behind it, it could just sting them. Oh, cool. And, wow. and what's, what's this on the other end, this green thing? Oh, this? Yeah. Well, that's little fish, and this is squirting out some poison to kill, um, kill them, and so this thing could feed a it. A lot wow. of protection and quite a structure to this fish's body then. Yeah, so yeah, something like this animal would have to have a skeleton inside, I th I'd think. And these are some pieces of backbone from different kinds of fish. This is two sections or two vertebrae from the backbone of a... Um, spear fish, a fast moving fish of the open water, and this is a single vertebrae or backbone segment from a shark. Okay, you know, speaking of sharks and out in the water, we now have Uncle Joe live underwater, and I don't know if he's got a shark with us with him, but Uncle Joe, are you there, and what have you been able to find today? Well, hello, Patty, Carol, and everybody, and the Reef West audience. This is live, Uncle Joe, and I'm at Conneoe Bay. I am on a reef, and let me point you down to a coral reef. You can see some of the small damsel fish in front of the camera. We have some rife coral, which is the most dominant coral that we have down here. This habitat is very, very good for protection on many species. And in front of the camera now, you may be able to see an animal that we discussed before. This is a little worm, a little polychaete worm. And notice then that when I move my camera in front of this little worm, uh, hopefully it will be able to almost instantly retract. So let me push my camera downward. And of course, the worm <laughs> back inside. Now, diving in Kaneohe Bay, one of the things that was mentioned is there are many, many thousand hammerhead sharks around here. And what I thought I saw a little while ago was a little hammerhead whoop, actually swimming around. <laughs> now, what the heck do we have here, kids? This is uh, my little friendly hammerhead that comes in to say hello to us. You'll notice the unusual adaptation, which is the eyes. These eyes are very special. Not only are they set out on the head, but they have sensors that magnify the light like tiny mirrors, giving them twice the low light level capability as even cats. And we know cats can see very well underwater. So as my little hand shark then moves around the reef, you can see its extended eyes out really allows it to survey its territory, including coming down. Hey, Joe? Uncle Joe, are you there? Oh, your hammerhead just scared a feather duster worm there. Um, Uncle Joe, we have a question from Noe Lani, a school here in Hawaii. And Noe Lani, who is there? I. And what's your question for Uncle Joe? How many hammerhead hammer shark, sharks are in there? Uncle Joe, the question was, how many hammerhead sharks are you seeing down in there? Oh, well, actually, today, Patty, we didn't see any hammerhead sharks. We did see about 50 Moorish idols about 20 damselfish, and we had a lot of mullet and baitfish in the water. But in this particular area, we're relatively shallow, and we have not seen any hammerheads, except my little friend that I brought with me to say hi. <laughs> oh, no, I thought it was real, Joe. I was worried about you. Um, let's, let's go to, I think we have a question all the way from Michigan also. And Michigan, are you there? Hello? And who is this? Um, this is Mark. Okay, Mark. Hi, my name is Mark J. What's I am in the fourth grade. I am nine years old. And my question is, how did Uncle Joe design and build the coral cam? Whoa. <laughs> well, hello, Mark. Uh, I'm glad that you had a chance to see the coral cam. The coral cam then has a miniature camera and a small, tiny computer built inside it. I hope you have an opportunity to tune in and look at the pictures. We're going to uh, actually move it to a different location, so stay tuned, and maybe I'm going to hire you to help me build the next coral cam, Mark. Got another question from here in the studio. While, while, keep looking at that stuff, Joe, and Michi, what's your question for him? Um, Uncle Joe, in the habitat where you're near, um, what kind of animals would live there? The animals that live inside this coral habitat are feather duster worms, which we've seen, small shrimp, tiny fish. Occasionally we can 
see little Lori Eel tucked in the side. Many of these animals then are animals that need the protection of the reef because they do have other predators. Now, I know that Randy has found some interesting animals, so what I'm going to do is bring the camera up in front of Randy and give you an idea then of maybe some of the some of the animals then that we see on the reef. Now Randy will put them down. The first one that we're going to look at is actually a type of coral known as a mushroom coral. Well, most corals then are what's called sedentary. In other words, they're attached. This coral then actually can move around. I'll bring it close to the camera. And at night, it has tiny appendages which go out and allow it to move around. Now, Another animal that we see on the reef is a feather duster worm. And we saw it retract before. Here you can see it held in my hand. Its little parchment tube then is perfectly designed to fit inside the coral for protection. So that's an excellent adaptation. I know many of you have talked about sea cucumbers, and this is what I have in my hand. The sea cucumbers then actually live on the bottom in this sediment or sandy area and they feed on the organic nutrients on the inside. Now, in this area we do have a number of different sea cucumbers and somebody had talked about the tentacles moving around in the mouth. So in front of my camera you can actually see the tentacles from this sea cucumber extending outward as it moves down to search for food on the reef. We have another question here, Joe, from in the studio. And what's your question? How deep of water are you in, Uncle Joe? Well, the water that we're diving into right now off Coconut Island in Kaneohe Bay is about, oh, about 20 feet deep. The water temperature is about 80 degrees. But you know, we had a big storm coming through here, some of the largest waves in Hawaii. So the visibility really isn't quite that good today. Uncle Joe, we got another question that's come in on the internet. And Tim, can you give us the question, please? Hello, Joe. Yes, Paris from Wayne is asking, how can you dive in the reef without getting bit? Uh, I didn't quite catch that. Can you repeat that, please? Yes, Paris and Wayne is asking you, how can you dive in the reef without getting bit? Without getting bit? Right. Uh, there's not too much down here to bite us. We don't have any hammerhead sharks. And the only thing that we could possibly run into would be something that Randy has brought me, this little sea urchin. Of course, you can see the spines on it. We certainly wouldn't want to impact that. This is one common animal on the reef. And we also have a tiny sea cucumber. I've shown you two other species. Okay. This little white sea cucumber. Uncle is Joe, we need to leave you at this time. And um, thank you for uh, sharing that underwater world with us. You are loud and clear today. Bye, guys. We'll see you next week. And we just.